What's the deal? Family, welcome back to the channel. Today we got another banger for y'all, man. So look. We got Boom. The deadliest knockout machine ever. Boo will call Bantramek. All right, about to run this shot one time for the one time. And uh, this video was brought to us by Vote Sport. Make sure to go check him out, run him up. This is slowly becoming one of my favorite combat sports channels, man. Uh, so make sure to go tap in with him, go check him out. All right, but we're going to run up Bulacar Bantamek, man. Look, I've reacted to him in the past. Y'all know I rock with the Muay Thai vibes. Um, Senchai, Taiwan, all the dudes, man, all of them. But we're going to check out this video, man. I, I've never seen this one specifically. Um, but if you want to check out my other Bulacar reactions or Muay Thai, just look up my channel name and look up Muay Thai. Or the fighter or whatever. Let's hop into it. This is going to be a two-part video, so I'm going to do like half of it. And then, boom, in a day or two, we're going to drop the second half. Um, just so it's not as like crazy long or nothing like that. But let's hop in. Let's see what they're talking about on this one. Make sure to hit that like button subscribe if you end up liking the video. Oh, my God. <laughs> My guy is going Super Saiyan 5 right now. Come on, dog. He is Goku. Boo will call you my Goku. He is Goku. Goku is him. <laughs> in over three decades and through 300 battles in the ring, Buakao Banchamek has asserted himself as one of the greatest strikers in martial arts history. Oh and single-handedly altered the course of the sport's development. Get your ass there! Get your ass there! Formerly known as Poor Pramuk, he forced K1 to ban prolonged clinching with his dominant infighting. Damn! Became the organization's first two-time middleweight king. And then pieced out to conquer the world Bam! stage. Bam! 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 <laughs> Today we'll recount the legendary journey of the White Lotus, from a regional champion to a mythical icon. Furthermore, the 41-year-old Buakal will soon return to the big ring. Roy Jones Jr. просто. Sambat Banchamek was born in a small Thai village in the Surin province on May 8, 1982. As is customary, he stepped into the ring at the young age of seven, being dubbed the Black Demon for his dark skin. The moniker suited him well, foreshadowing his future fearsome rip- They called him the Black Demon. Oh my God, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. We got black demons, we got white devils. I mean, shit, fuck it, I guess. Fuck it, I guess, huh? We got black demons, we got white devils. Fuck it. Fuck it. Who cares? Because <laughs> bro is on demon time. I ain't even gonna lie. Bro, if you see him in the ring, he on demon time. So I ain't even mad at it. Fuck it. Reputation, even by exceptional local standards. Bam! I first saw the fight and fell in love with Muay Thai. We gathered a group of kids and started training ourselves. You had to pay to perform, and my mom gave me 100 baht from her last bit of money. The entire village came out to support me. That's how it all began. Before long, Sambat's enchanting charisma was on full and captivating display, drawing attention of female spectators, who gleefully watched his relentless work through the ropes. <laughs> At 12 years old, he moved closer to the capital, Bangkok, and joined the Poor Pramuk Gym, eagerly immersing himself in a hardcore training regimen. <laughs> Sambat adopted a new name, which according to... Bro, them kicks are like gunshots. 
Sambat adopted a new name, which according to traditional beliefs would protect the bearer from the evil eye. From now on, he would be known as Buakau, which translates to White Lotus. The last name Por Pramuk came from the gym's name, and suddenly he was feared more than any other curse. By 2004, the TIE fighter had claimed a critical amount of belts and international level victims. BAM! Among them were notable Japanese names. Among them were. Imagine, imagine you doing a high kick to the dome, right? You kick this dude so hard, his whole body go in the air, dog. <laughs> From a high kick to the... You feel what I'm saying, bro? A high kick to the dome and his whole body fly up in the air, bro. This ain't the uppercut. Just... That's crazy. Among them were notable Japanese names. Uh, uh, hi, uh, hi. Which paved the way for the White Lotus to join the world's premier organization. <laughs> Already in April, Buakau entered the K1 World Grand Prix at 154 pounds, a new weight class for him. In the round of 16 of the most prestigious kickboxing tournament, he effortlessly tripped his opponent. Occasionally adding low kicks. Here. Early on in this, the first. But once the insolent fella decided to bite back, so Jordan tie, and arrogantly put together combinations. Otherwise, this is going to detriment Jordan. Under oh, he ain't doing Pramuk nothing. He ain't doing nothing. Ferocious self. Bam. From Jordan Bam. Tye. Tye having Smith. to get out Smith. of trouble. Oh, they're so tough. The adversary's only achievement in this nine minute long beatdown was not tasting the floor. The Thai is going about his business in relentless fashion. And Jordan Thai needs to cover up, really. The Thai is done. As a result, the White Lotus advanced to the final stage of the annual Game of Thrones. It was a one day tournament in July where eight of the deadliest kickboxers on the planet competed for the title of Undisputed Division Monarch. First, the 22-year-old Buakau faced John Wayne Parr. The renowned Australian was part of the sports nobility, who had seen it all in the ring. <laughs> and was one of the favorites to win the Grand Prix. <laughs> oh, shit! He got some power on him! Okay, It's not Hold surprising up. that the start of this confrontation turned into a showcase of Muay Thai beauty with plenty of kicking exchanges. Ooh! He smacked the shit out of Nevertheless, around the halfway point, Par switched to boxing combos and managed to seize the initiative. Oh. Yo, that dude hit solid. I ain't even gonna lie. Them things just boop, 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 boop. Oh, those things is coming solid. But this is Goku, so... You know what I'm saying? This is Goku, though, so... Oh. He hit solid, though. In response, poor Pramuk changed his tactics to keep the foe at bay, pumping kicks. <laughs> The new approach bore fruit, and the third stretch ended on even terms. Oh, yeah. Nobody was willing to give up an extra round either. Still, a surge of adrenaline allowed Buakau to go on the offensive, which lasted until the bell. Damn. Having secured a high-profile victory, the Thai prodigy then clashed with Takayuki Koryumaki. The lanky karateka had one-touch demolition power, could throw solid knee strikes, Oh shit! 
and even managed to defeat Mike Zambidis earlier that night. In the beginning, the Japanese athlete disrespectfully swept the tie off his feet. Damn, he said, get your ass down, boy. Buakawa what? turned the favor. Yeah. Yeah, now sit your ass back down, homie. Now sit, now sit your ass back down, homie. You know what I mean? Anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> then punished him thoroughly. Carol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unchallenged aerial and terrestrial supremacy lasted for four minutes of doom. Until Koryumaki finally learned his lesson. After dismantling Takayuki and speed running into the final, poor Pramu crossed paths with the Japanese schoolgirl's wet dream, Masato Kobayashi. The Silver Wolf, as they called him, was one of the best kickboxers of his generation, with an extensive... We not just don't skip over the fact dude said a Japanese schoolgirl's wet dream. That's a wild place to go to, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I understand the point he's trying to make, but that's a wild place to go to, you know what I mean? Like, he was scripting out the video and he typed that in and was like, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Japanese schoolgirls wet dry. <laughs> that was a wild one right there, but I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you live, bro. I'm gonna let you live. That was a wild take, though resume moreover he was the reigning k1 grand prix champion coming in as the favorite kobayashi made it to the finale considerably battered however his indomitable samurai soul left him no choice but to engage in fiery shootouts In retaliation, poor Pramuk started front kicking, which gave him an advantage at range. Back up off me, my boy. To avoid trading in the pocket, he also happily engaged in clinches. And Masato's only hope was to read the Lotus Sutra. Poor cause parade of excitement Damn. continued to gain momentum. <laughs> Once the Japanese striker's prayers took effect, Good ass right here. Poor Pramuk's total dominance morphed into a toe to toe struggle. Even though the challenger was ahead thanks to patented Muay Thai moves. Ooh. The fearless Masato had no intention of giving in. As they approached the finish line, Buakao was fully confident in his victory. <laughs> Unfortunately, the slyness of the Japanese judges showed itself. Buakao had to win the extra round that his enemy was gifted. Man, if I was bull a car, I'd go into that extra round on stupid savage mode, bro. I need... <coughs> I'm going to that battle. I'm trying to kill this fool. I need to kill him. Because if I end, if I 
fight him to the point I'm trying to kill him, I'm for sure going to win. Because I ain't going to let him kill me. But that's how I'll be fighting. Like, y'all going to do me like that? Now I got to go into extra rounds? Come on, bro. I'm trying to kill this fool. Luckily, Masato found no antidote to the tie-ups. By the end of the 12-minute long scrap of the year, where fans barely had time to wipe off their sweat, poor Pramuk left no doubts about the champion's name. Previously unknown outside his homeland, the Thai prospect became an instant global star. I was happy to showcase the power of Muay Thai to the world. I'm thankful to K1 for at least that. After this, our sport was heard everywhere. This Grand Prix had far-reaching consequences for K1. In order to discreetly prevent Buakao's hegemony, the organization imposed a rule across all weight classes, limiting clinch strikes to one per engagement. Now, the Thai Phenom couldn't... Bro was so good, they had to change the rules for him, dog. They had to completely change the rules across all organizations because he was just that nice. And they didn't like that. They didn't like the Black Demon being on Demon Time and getting to this bag. They ain't like that. They ain't like the black demon getting to the bag on demon time. They ain't like that at all. So they had to change the rules, bro. That's how you know he's great, bro. When you really that good, they change the rules for you, bro. When you when you built different like that, they change the rules for you. Look, Shaq, they had the Shaq rules, the Wilt Chamberlain rules, the uh the uh the Jordan rules. Right? Like, when you just different and you built different, they're going to change the rules for you, bro. It's just, it's, it be like that, bro. It be like that. Use not just his elbows, but also consecutive knees. Hey! The effect of this taboo was on display against Kozo Takeda, where the White Lotus was forced to stay at distance. <laughs> Woo! The battle tested Takeda, who had fought Thai guys often and successfully, capitalized on the situation. <laughs> Burkow had to adapt on the fly during the intense encounter. <laughs> The winning formula was discovered in the fifth. Damn, solid stiff jab. Adjusting to the new rule set and ringing Takeda's bell twice. In 2005, poor Pramuk went on to collide with the world champion from Belarus. His opponent did the utmost to earn the respect of the hard-headed Thai. But Buakao's kick sounded like an explosion at a construction site. Oh and he had no intention of holding back until the time expired. Bro, his kick sounds like gunshots in the distance. Like, it's kind of crazy. Everyone has their own idea of Muay Thai until they take a hit from a real Thai. They restricted me. I had to evolve and train in boxing three times more than before. In July, the White Lotus squared off against one of the elite, Albert Kraus, the winner of the first middleweight Grand Prix in 2002, despite being regarded as one of the most skillful kickboxers in the promotion. He definitely trains hard and he's got skill. Right hand from Kraus, the big kickboxer! He was not reluctant to spin the deadly windmill and grind his enemies down. He wanted to knock him out. Oh, that's it! It's all over! Kraus and Buakau had crossed paths before. That time, the Dutchman shined on the counter. And sat the tie down. Ooh. 
Good right here. This bullshit. Poor Pramuk enacted revenge with a batch of artillery knees. He kept the gas pedal to the floor till the end. Earning points in multiple collisions. Nevertheless, the judges didn't appreciate his sportsmanship and awarded Kraus with a controversial win. Poor Pramuk drew conclusions from the 2005 Grand Prix rematch and became the one who always had the last say in exchanges. Albert never managed to catch up, while Buakau high on dopamine rained down with hammers of fury. Oh, oh he going crazy! The fresher Me. tie was ahead in the closing stages. And comfortably went to a decision. For the second year in a row, poor Pramuk reached the final, where he was greeted by Andy Sauer. It was his first crack at the belt for the energetic Dutch technician, but his ability to send guys to the Shadow Realm was beyond doubt. It was a play of contrasts from the opening seconds. You can tell. Even just from watching this video alone and other videos I've watched, you can tell he struggles with fighters who put a, a little bit, tad bit more focus on boxing and, and you know, hand striking. Um, you can tell that's probably where his biggest weakness is at. But, as we all, as he also said, he's working, he was working on boxing and he put more focus into his own boxing. But you can tell, like, that's definitely his, probably his only weak point or point of, like, opportunity you could wiggle through is if you could outstrike him and avoid damage from his kicks and his knees and all that, that's going to be your best bet against that dude, against this dude, to be honest. Kao delivered his signature explosive kicks. Ooh, and did as he pleased in the tie-ups. Andy, on the other hand, excelled in sharp boxing flurries. At the end of the first, the contestants found the pulse of the battle. In the second frame, poor Pramuk acknowledged Sauer as a worthy adversary to trade with and tried to trap him in bear hugs. The Dutchman realized clinching was inevitable and fired from all barrels whenever possible. Keep fighting back, though. In return, Huakao sought to build an advantage to prevent any risk of a robbery. Andy defied his plans at times. When the dust settled, many believed that poor Pramok had done more overall. Still, the Japanese judges clearly disliked him and gave Sauer a chance. So why are they doing my boy dirty, dog? Why do they keep doing my boy dirty? What's up with Japanese people and Thai, and Thai people? Y'all ain't y'all not cool? Is there something that I don't know about? What is going? Cause now I'm starting to get mad.
You know what I mean? Like, what's going on, dog? I don't like unfair competition. I don't like, I hate when judges do whatever they be doing, bro. I hate that shit, bro. What y'all got against my boy, bro? What do the Japanese got against the Thai people? What's, 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 what is this? This got to do with samurais versus Muay Thai fight? Like, what does this have to do with, bro? Why? There's something I don't know about. Let me know in the comments, because I'm not, I'm confused. Why y'all doing my boy dirty? Is it because he the black demon? Is it because he from Thailand and y'all Japanese? This is a Japanese competition. What is it? How can you just keep robbing this fool when he's clearly beating these guys? The Warriors stayed inside the squared circle for an additional two rounds where the action didn't falter. <laughs> It's been quite windy in the ring so far, but now the stormy sky crackled with lightning. Late into the fifth stretch, the bout was completely even. At this point, victory could go either way. Following a 15-minute massacre in front of 18,000 spectators, the Grand Prix Championship went to Andy Sauer. Disappointed, poor Pramuk immediately left the stage. Yet everyone knew his vengeance would be legendary. All fighters have performances where they need to give more, but it's too late. This was just one of those days. Hmm. All right, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and then we'll be right back.